Why does the front of me feel warm? Why does it feel like my organs are pressed into my front of me? Hello, people of the interwebs. It's your favorite garage dwelling Sarah here with another car review. And today I have the 2021 Acura NSX. This, in my opinion, is the anti-supercar supercar because the type of people that buy a supercar solely because it has a Lamborghini badge or McLaren badge or a Ferrari badge aren't gonna pay attention to this. And that's why I respect it. First up, this paint job is called Valencia Red Pearl. It is a $6,000 optional candy paint job. And more importantly, regardless of what color you get on the NSX, they're all hand painted. Two coats of primer, five base coats, two more clear coats, it's wet sanded, and then two more clear coats. And because this is candy paint, I think the first round of clear coats are probably a translucent red if I would guess. But you might have also seen this on a previous review I did of a PMC edition of an Acura. That comes standard with this color, which is crazy because they charge a six grand on the NSX for it. I love the little subtle attentions of detail that most people won't pick up on, like the fact that the heat exchangers behind this grill are done in a black anodized finish, so that way you don't see them behind the bumper cover. Aside from these gunmetal double staggered wheels, 19s in the front, 20s in the rear, this NSX is specced out with almost every option possible, which includes these carbon ceramic brakes, six pot monoblock Brembo calipers in the front, four pot in the rear, and you can get them in various colors, depending on what you want to match with the color of the car. The lines on this car are absolutely gorgeous. I love how this quarter panel blends into the roof like this and there's an opening right here similar to like you have on a Ford GT and obviously there's massive vents right here that goes with the heat exchangers in the back and these door handles they pop out when you hit unlock. And if the car is already unlocked, you don't need the fob to make the door handle automatically pop out. You can just simply grab the end and open it like an old school door handle. This roof is finished in carbon fiber, but you can also get it in painted black aluminum if you want. I know this car has been out for several years now and it's nothing new to some people, but I personally had never seen one of these in person until I did the review on it. And I love the fact that you can still tell absolutely what kind of car this is when you see these tail lights. It is absolutely a Honda Acura product with a center bar that goes all the way across the other side. And the masterpiece of this all is inside this back window, you can see the engine cover that looks like Tony Stark's chest, or at least the thing that was keeping him alive before he had the, the thing removed. I'll open this up real quick so you can see. It does have some storage space back here, surprisingly enough. It is optional to have these carbon fiber pieces around the engine. If not, it's just regular black plastic. But what I like is right here, you can see the build number of the car. It's kind of crazy. The backup camera stares you in the face when you have the hatch open. As far as the interior goes, I can see a source of criticism for some when it comes to the fact that this definitely looks like an Acura product in here, especially the controls for your gear selector. I mean, that's the same in every other Acura product I've reviewed so far. And that's actually why I like this. It's not crazy and wild and over the top. As much as I like the new C8 Corvette with that pillar that runs down the center console of all the buttons, this is so much more subtle and subdued than that. There's actually not a lot of buttons throughout the interior. It's very simplistic and clean. So inside the glove box over here, not only is there the hidden cup holder that is stowed inside here, but on the side of the center console for this car, there's a little cartridge slot. It looks like it's for an old school Game Boy game, but it's not. It's for an optional cup holder that you can remove and stow so you don't have a tacky cup holder in your car. It's actually smart, I like this. Some people might hate it. There's also two little mystery switches right here for your windows and your hatch, as well as a USB plug. I have no idea what these do. They do something. That, that just happened. Because this car is fairly loaded up with options, it does have the full leather seating surfaces. Normally you can get an Alcantara suede in the center. That would absolutely be the way to go for me. They are heated, and as far as bolstering goes, I'm wearing a leather skirt, sorry. Oh yeah, 
Good bolt steering. Steering wheel, dry carbon fiber on the sides, that's pretty. A couple controls on here for your cruise control and your menu functions. That's it. Most people wouldn't find this, but there's actually a little power outlet all the way down here in the passenger side footwell that's illuminated. And there's also a blue LED light in there for who knows what. Rubber mat is actually included with the car. And the bottom of it says Honda. Honda. There's a strange material over here under the start button. It's like little 3D plastic cubes. I was expecting to see some little baby robot larvae inside there. That was probably the dumbest thing I've ever said in my entire life. All right, let's fire this thing up, see how it sounds. As far as the gauges, infotainment, and sound system goes, the 580 watt ELS sound system in here, on point. And of course it does have fruit and robot compatibility inside here as well. And on the factory satellite navigation, it shows a little cartoon NSX instead of an arrow. That is so adorable, I love it. I wonder if you can change the color of the car to match yours, please tell me. Settings, map and vehicle, vehicle, please. Yes, oh my God, no way you can actually choose are you serious? They have the carbon fiber roofs. Shut up. That's the exact core. <laughs> no way. What is? What else do they have in here? Map theme Acura? Oh, that's cool. You can change the theme of the map. Why do they even have this? There are no physical buttons to control the sound system. There's just a little virtual one off to the side. I know a lot of people hate that but I actually don't mind it in here because I don't know, you just, you touch it. It's, you're still using your finger. You have your temperature right here and a little digital display that you can see just by pressing the on off button. And if you need further adjustment, you can hit this giant climate button and then it allows you to make individual adjustments to where you want the air to come from. This is, this is life. This, this is why I love cars because of vehicles like this. Drive, I'm gonna take off silently because it's a hybrid. As far as the EV mode goes, you have your battery gauge right here. And as you're driving, this will slowly deplete. But when you kick it over into sport or sport plus, you'll see the battery gauge will actually turn white and that regenerates the power that you depleted rather quickly. That's actually really cool that you can do this. Oh, the engine fired up. In the name of science, I am now gonna give this thing the beans. I'm going to put it into track mode by turning this knob and holding it to the right. As far as drive modes go, you have quiet, which is mostly EV mode. You can go over to sport, and you can see stuff changing there in the center for your powertrain, your suspension, steering, stuff like that. Then you also have sport plus, and if you hold it all the way to the right, it unlocks track mode, the most aggressive of them all and this does have launch control. It may or may not be utilized. Ready? Go. Oh, jeez. Oh, good enough, good enough, good enough. Bumps. I had to I had to pull over and stop for a second to gather my thoughts. I'm shaking. It the car almost kind of like shimmies, and you can feel like it's pulling a wheelie almost, and then it just shoots like someone fired a gun. Uh, and I think on paper the new C8 Corvette I reviewed technically would be faster in a straight line, but this feels ten times faster because of how it puts the power down. Well, this is different. Hop in the trunk to get to the engine. Can I take any of you off without a tool? Does not look like it. Sad. All right. 
Hello, and welcome to Garage Science with Sarah. Under the engine cover of this NSX lies the JNC1. It is a three and a half liter dual overhead cam dry sump twin turbo V6 that on its own produces 500 horsepower from 65 to 7,500 RPM and 406 pound feet of torque from 2,000 to 6,000 RPM. But because this is a hybrid between the two front electric motors, the single rear electric motor, and the twin turbo V6, the total system output is 573 horsepower and 476 pound feet of torque. Underneath the sea of carbon fiber that I would love to remove to peek underneath there lies the rear electric motor. And the main purpose of this is not so much to aid in efficiency, while I'm sure it does a tiny bit, but its main purpose is to fill the gaps in the power band from the twin turbo V6. That's the way hybrids should be utilized. It's time for the braking test. Nobody behind me? Ready? Oh, fuck my life. Why does the front of me feel warm? Why does it feel like my organs are pressed into my front of me? Why is this warm right now? I feel weird. <laughs> I don't like this. Frunk popper. Hello, I'm back. I have the frunk popped on this car because up here, instead of a small storage compartment like I have on my MR2, is drivetrain stuff. Because this is all wheel drive, it has two electric motors up front to provide power for these two front wheels and also can torque vector because each one has its own electric motor as well as the electric motor in the rear and the gasoline three and a half liter twin turbo V6. That is all paired to a nine speed wet dual clutch gearbox, which is an absolute delight to drive. I thought this was interesting. So right here is the inner fender liner and right there is the top of the strut and it's really hard to see, but it's actually mounted at an angle going in towards the lower control arm. It's like a race car. It does a great job at making this 3,800 pound and change car feel feather light. It's, it's, I was shocked to find out how much this thing actually weighed. All right, this is kind of hilarious. There, there is no looking at the underside of the NSX unless I start disassembling it because it is entirely a slick, flat floor under this car. There's, there's nothing to look at at all. I should have expected that because it's a supercar, but I wasn't expecting that. That's so funny. Well, I got this thing up in the air. At least you can get a good look at these two-piece carbon ceramic rotors. You can see the inner portion here it has like this oil slick looking coloration to it from probably heat and how your parking brake is divorced from the main rear brake caliper. Also, cause this thing is loaded up with carbon fiber accessories. You can see it does have this carbon rear diffuser. It goes way down underneath there. And the four exhaust tips that are right in the center of this nice black trim. off behind you when you let off the gas you hear a little you actually hear the turbo spooling ever so slightly but you gotta be low you gotta be really low throttle input or else the engine just gets too loud and you can't hear the spooling that's so much induction sound from this v6 it sounds so good now i do have it in the sport plus setting which does stiffen up the suspension and uh, on a back road, it's a little harsh, a little bit. This if I switch it over into, put it to quiet. I just want to see what it's like in quiet. It also makes this loud gray noise hum when you have it in full EV mode outside the car, especially if you put it in reverse so you can hear that the car is there. I love the fact that when you have it in regular drive mode, if you use the paddle shifters, 
it recognizes it and it still shifts quickly, but it instantly goes back into a normal drive setting. And it's almost like you gave the computer a suggestion of what you're looking to do and it knows. It's like, okay, I got you. And it doesn't fight you or try to do something you don't want it to again immediately after you make those inputs. And then when you put it into manual mode, it's like, all right, you control me. I don't know, I just, I've never experienced a car like this before. This is just something entirely new. Love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it. I love this nine speed transmission too. The fact that like when you're inching forward, getting ready to take off, you can hear it making little micro adjustments, little revs, like burp, burp, burp. Like it's just ready to go. And the idle's really high too. Idle's around a thousand RPM. constant sucking sound of air coming into the engine right now going up hills you only have to make subtle little adjustments and in inputs with everything on this car the steering the throttle like if I have an itch on my big toe you can hear it in the throttle It's like playing, if you ever played a, a racing game for a, a console like Xbox or PlayStation with one of those racing wheels, it's similar to that where it doesn't take a lot of input to make little micro adjustments in the car. If I had to try to pick one fault at all about this car driving it, I'd have to say where the footrest is on the left of the pedals for your left foot, I feel it's a little closer than where my right foot is at on the other pedals. Other than that, I, I would be reaching if I was looking for faults in this NSX. I think a fault is that not enough people pay attention to this car. The fact that it doesn't sell doesn't surprise me because I feel this level of car is more about flexing than anything. And when people see the Acura badge, they're like, ugh no one else is going to care because it's got an Acura badge. And that's why I like this car. There's something special about someone that has one of these cars. If someone told me they had a McLaren and I wanted to come check it out, I'd be like, cool, McLaren. If someone said they had a brand new NSX, I'd be like, dude, I want to see that. As far as the fuel economy goes, it's for as fast as this car is, the fuel economy is impressive. But the fact that it is a hybrid, I guess you could be like, well, I wish it had a little bit better economy since you can drive in full EV mode. I could see a complaint there, but I think that's just still reaching for a complaint. I, this, this is now my new dream car. If you guys have never seen one of my car reviews before, I have multiple categories to rate and assess them. Starting with the bean score, is a rating of one to five beans, based on feeling you get in your gut when you give it the beans. And this Acura NSX is getting a rating of 4.5 beans. I swear this feels like the fastest car I've ever reviewed because of the assistance of these electric motors. This thing is incredible and it's pretty much the all around perfect car in my opinion. I love it. Which leads into the next category, the cookie score. It is an assessment of one to five cookies based on what you get for what you spend. It's an assessment of value. And this NSX right here as it sits as equipped is getting a rating of 4.9 cookies. It's getting just a smidge below the top score possible because this one's loaded up with a bunch of carbon fiber accessories and stuff. And I feel right out of the box, if you get one of these with nothing added to it, it is astonishing value compared to its competitors. It still is astonishing value even loaded up with a bunch of options. Next is the Squid Score. It is an assessment just for supercars on its squid-like ability to squid around stuff. Anyway, this NSX is getting a rating of 3.5 squids. 
I wish I could have tested this thing on a track and see what its limits are, but I honestly don't think I could ever reach its limits at my driving ability. Lastly is the Penguin Score. It is an assessment of one to five penguins based on how much I personally like a vehicle. And this NSX is getting a rating of obviously five penguins. Are you serious? Why would I get any less? This, I've never wanted a supercar, but this is one I would actually love to have. This car, this is, this is it. This is the car. This is my, if you want to know what my dream car is, that I, is unattainable, this is it. It's this car right here. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy this view and I'll see you soon with another. Bye.